Well, welcome to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. I want to share with you steps on how you can lay hold of who you are in Christ and step into the place where today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of your breakthrough. Most of us live with a revelation that, yes, one day, someday we will get that breakthrough. Someday we will be blessed of the Lord. Someday. But as you press in, as you get a revelation of who you are in Christ in the secret place of His presence, you will discover that this is the day of salvation. Today, it will change everything. It will change radically how you think, how you walk, and how you talk. Now, I'm going to share insight from Smith Wigglesworth, and I pray this message is truly a blessing to you. Father, I just stand in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that you give us eyes to see, ears to hear. We want to know who we are in you. We want to fully appreciate and have full revelation of what Jesus did for us on the cross and through his ascension and glorification in heaven. Father, I thank you that this is the day of salvation. Holy Spirit, come and breathe in us. Let the word have such impact to change us radically today. Father, I thank you that you'd receive all the glory, all the honor, all the power, all the praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And I want to start by reading, uh, if I may, from John 17, 1. Jesus spoke these things, and lifting his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. And we see throughout the ministry of Jesus, one of the things that he did that offended is to say, this day is this scripture fulfilled, that Jesus all of a sudden brought such revelation that today really was the day of salvation. Today really was the day of breakthrough. See, it's easy for me to believe that Sunday, most of us walk in such a revelation of, for example, the power of a curse. And I know we look at how everything I touch falls apart. They're from cursed. And how the enemy wants to keep you in that place where you are abiding in the curse. Why? Because you're never qualified enough to walk blessed. And so someday in the future, I will earn the blessing. But if we can walk where we are blessed and everything we touch has that life and blessing that we just are so flowing with the blessing of life, the difference it would make that this generation would truly see Jesus. I look at the disciples. They were nothings and nobodies. We see that after Judas leaves the room, that Jesus begins to download into these disciples and share with them. He finishes in chapter 17 with this high priestly prayer. These men, these people that were in that room, were about to see their world turned upside down. Everything that they knew, everything that they believed in, suddenly turned upside down. As Jesus would be brutally killed, put into the grave, and it looked like it was all over. And it would take three days before everything would change. But when it did, it it began a process where they would soon discover who they were as they discovered the importance of abiding in that secret place, having that personal relationship with Jesus. They were changed and became such new creations in Christ that the world saw and recognized they had something. Oh, they were not so special and unique, but we all, by the blood of Jesus, are brought into that same place. That, when you look at the disciples, that even their shadows had such a spill zone of the presence and blessing that their shadows carried an authority. God desires that we all in this generation walk so blessed of the Lord, filled with that life, that people see it in us, and they recognize you have something that I want. Smith Wigglesworth said this, Yes, I believe all that our hearts and minds this day might come to that place of understanding, where we realize that it is possible if we only believe for God to take all human weakness and failures and transform us by His mighty power into new creations. That this day, all those weaknesses that the enemy is so reminding me of, all those weaknesses that have so helped me, that every time I try to get to that place that today I qualify for the blessing, I'm too weak. I'm too emotionally weak. I'm too physically weak. The flesh is willing. Sorry, the spirit is desiring, but the flesh is weak. And I simply cannot make it happen. That what was, this is exactly that was demonstrated 
during these three days. These disciples would soon learn that while the spirit was willing, the flesh was simply too weak. They needed something to transform them, to change them. If they dared believe, they would be changed by the power and might of the Lord through the Holy Spirit. Oh, to believe and come into the holy realm of the knowledge of what it means to yield all to our God. Just think of what would happen if we only dared believe God. Oh, for a faith that leaps into the will of God and says, Amen. See, it's easy to say that one day I will do that for you, Lord. One day. But see, as we look at it, and today, there is a cost to be paid. There's something we have to do, and there has to be a change in us. And we don't like it. But God wants in the secret place to bring you to that this is the day of salvation. Today, everything changed. The hour has come. Your breakthrough is here today. We know in Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2, that it's not in a time of great light. It's not in a time where we are walking so spiritual and everything is so good on the earth. But it's a time of great gloom and darkness that we are called to arise, be stirred up, and shine, where we have to stir ourselves up in the secret place of the Most High God, know who we are, and begin to shine, demonstrating that glory that's come upon us, that the world might see it. So how do we do this? Well, the first step is remembering. Um, Smith Wigglesworth said this, I I'm sure that everyone in this place has a great desire to do something for Jesus. And that which he wants us to do is to keep in remembrance the cross, the grave, the resurrection, and the ascension. For the memory of these four events will always bring you into a place of great blessing. God wants to bring you to a place of the blessing, where you walk with his blessing on you, so tangibly that you're marked out as blessed, so that everything I touch that blessing is transmitted and it brings life that the world sees that but we've got to remember in john 15 26 jesus is but the helper the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name he will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all that i said to you he is the one who brings to remembrance with an authority of everything jesus did we need to look back and remember the cross Remember the grave, remember the resurrection, and remember the ascension through the Holy Spirit. Smith added, You do not need, however, to continually live on the cross or even in remembrance of the cross. But what you need to remember of the cross is it is finished. You do not need to live in the grave, but only keep in remembrance that he is risen out of the grave and that we are to be seated with him in glory. We need the Holy Spirit to give us in the secret place such a revelation now to remind us of the finished work of the cross and how it applies to us so that I'm facing real situations, real trials, real difficulties. How do I overcome today? Because I can't in my own might. So I have to look at the finished work of the cross and have such a revelation by the Spirit of God. I've got to see the grave, that place where my flesh failed the place where the enemy said one the victory is won, and how jesus denied the grave and overcame it so the worst that the enemy could throw at me jesus overcame and then i've got to see how he has ascended and how he raised me up with him and seated me with him in heavenly places in the place of victory all by the spirit of god to get such a revelation as we allow the holy spirit to bring us a remembrance through insight of what Jesus did. Number two, we need the Holy Spirit to show the vision. Smith said this, As the Master trod this earth, how the multitudes would gather with an eagerness and longing in their hearts to hear the words that dropped from His gracious lips. But there were those who had missed the vision. Now, when you think about this, that Jesus walked the earth, the most anointed man, the most anointed preacher who preached the perfect now message that was perfect for every person there yet so many never heard it yes they heard it with their physical ears but they didn't hear it 
They didn't receive it. It didn't change them. It didn't have the impact. And how many of us, we hear the word, but the word is always some future event. It's something one day. And we're not hearing that God is speaking to us this day so that we would receive how to receive our breakthrough this day, how to walk as an overcomer this day, and that this would be the day of salvation. Smith said this, they saw the Christ, heard his words, but those wonderful words were like were to them like uh, tales. And are we in that place so hardened that we see and hear the words, those precious promises, and they are wonderful, but they're tales. They don't apply to us. Have we so received the report of the enemy and lost sight of the report of the Holy Spirit that this day, that through the finished work of the cross, but I'm disqualified. Don't you know what I've done? Don't you know what I did in the past? Don't you remember the cross? Don't you remember the grave? Don't you remember how he rose? Don't you remember how he ascended and he raised you up and made you a new creation according to a new order? You don't fight this battle as a natural person, but a spiritual person. Oh, receive the vision. Smith said, when we miss the vision and do not come into the fullness of the ministry of the Spirit, there is a cause. Beloved, there's a deadness in us that must have the resurrection truth. And we need in the secret place for the Holy Ghost to so expose us that if there's anything, any hardness, any hurt, any issue where we are now allowing the report of the enemy to get in us, to so weaken us and convince us, may the Holy Ghost so shake us, so, so open our eyes to see, ears to hear, and give us such a hearing heart that those words impact us, Father, from heaven, and that no longer do we allow that report of the enemy to have way in our lives, to have a weight and an authority. But God, we choose. We believe the report of the Lord. We choose and we get a revelation of how that word, that promise is it for me today. Today, we have the unveiled truth for the dispensation of the Holy Ghost has come to unfold the fullness of redemption, that we might be clothed with power and that which brings us into the state where God can pour upon us his blessing is a broken spirit and a contrite heart. That in the secret place, God, break me. Let me have such a contrite heart that all my opinions, all those things I hold on to, all the hurts, Father God must bow. All those things that we have allowed to become strongholds must bow. And here in this place of brokenness before you, by your mighty hand, I come with a contrite heart. God, let your will be done. I come seeking your face, trusting that your word is your will and that you are good, not mean, not evil. I'm not receiving the evil and saying, God, that's your will. I am saying, God, no to that and saying yes to your will. That in all circumstances, you'll bring me into something greater. You want to produce in my life such a blessing and life. So number three, we need to understand, receive the present day ministry of the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8, we all know this, that you will receive the Holy Spirit and what he will empower you to be witnesses. We know in John 14, 16 and 17, and I'll read from the Amplified, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, to be with you forever, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive and take to its heart because it does not see him or know him. But you now know him because the Holy Spirit remains with you continually and will be in you. Now I'm reading this from the Amplified Bible simply to give you the depth of the meaning of the name of the Holy Spirit so that you get a revelation of his present day ministry. And I will go into this in more detail in a future message because we need to understand his present day ministry. Let me give you John 14, 26. But the helper, the comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, and standby, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things and he will help you remember everything I've told you. So as I look at that, I see that the Holy Spirit brings so much to the table, yet we are so ignorant of His present-day ministry. 
in the sacred place of His presence, here in this, this Holy of Holies. Here we meet the Holy Spirit because He is the breath of the Holy of Holies. That's where His name came from, the breath of the Holy of Holies. So let me translate it. He's the breath of the secret place. It is here He breathes on us. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Smith said this, We need to examine ourselves this morning to see what state we are in, whether we are just religious or whether we be truly in Christ. And I want Father God to so examine me. Am I in you or am I simply doing religious deeds? Am I simply saying things by me to look and appear good? Or am I saying things as being found in you? This has got to be a life. This has got to get real. This has got to be behind the scenes when no one's looking, going after him and getting God. I'm clinging to you because I need you to open my eyes that I may know you. I cannot reveal you. I look at this generation and they need you. How can I show you? I look at the circumstances I face and they're too big, too great. I can't overcome. But in your power and in your might, I can. I'm tired of trying to do it in my ability, but I understand that this is the day of salvation. Today, everything changes. I am locking in, seeking your face until everything changes. The human spirit, when perfectly united with the Holy Spirit, has but one place, and that is death and death and deeper death. The human spirit will then cease to desire to have its own way instead of my will, the cry of the heart will be, Thy will, O Lord, be done in me. A place of perfect surrender, where in the secret place I have such a revelation of His goodness and of the wonder of His will, that He's not trying to do evil to me, but He desires that I have life and that abundant. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And I can now separate by the Spirit that which is of the enemy and that which is of the Lord. And I don't receive the enemies. I make a stand. Too many of us have tolerated the enemy in our camp. We have tolerated and somehow thought this was of God. Instead of allowing the Holy Ghost to so reveal to us the Word and the perfect will of the Father, we say, God, I want that. I want that. I may go through some things, but no matter what I go through, I am always in the secret place, in that perfect place in you. Blessed of the Lord. I shared with you a little bit about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Let me just highlight what I want to get into in a future event. He is the Spirit of truth. Think about that. He always reveals truth, who you really are, what's real in you, the, the foundations and the um, strongholds that you have, who you are in Christ, who you are today. The Helper, He's the one there to help you, strengthen you, to teach you, to show you. How do I do this? How do I hear? How do I reveal Jesus? Help me, Holy Spirit. He's the comforter. He doesn't come to sympathize, but He comes to comfort, to stand with me and to lift me. He's the strengthener because you cannot do this in your own strength. And I need to have such a revelation of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. How do I exchange strengths? I'm emotionally drained. I'm physically worn out. God, I cannot overcome. I try. Holy Spirit, how do I exchange strengths in the secret place of your presence? He's your counselor. He's the one that gives you insight, wisdom, discernment. What do I do? How do I do it? The advocate, the one pleading Father's case with you. As Jesus pleads your case with the Father, He's pleading, here is the will and purpose and desire of the Father, so that you can, God, lo, I come to do your will. He's a teacher. He teaches, shows you, opens up this word and gives such revelation life that you discover it has enough force to impact you. He's the revealer. He reveals the Lordship of Jesus, the victory. We think of all the great names of God and how Jesus as Lord, He wants to reveal that in you. The Lord healer, the Lord your righteous, the Lord your peace in your life so that it's real, not just something in a book, but now real in you as you dwell in the secret place today. And He wants to reveal it now. He's the reminder, reminding you of all the things that Jesus did and bringing it to a relevance to you today. He is the empower. He empowers you to overcome. He anoints you. He's the giver of every gift and the fruit. He's the sender. He is the one who gives you purpose and value and says, go. 
and lo, I am with you. Next step, number four, is we need the manna of his presence. In the secret place, I don't want to just come and receive nice words. I don't want inspirational words that may make me feel good. I need the fresh manna of his presence. That word now that's been baked in the uh, oven of heaven, filled with the love and every ingredient, that life, that word, that promise that's in season, that's right for me, brought together under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, delivered with revelation and understanding that as I receive it, it's food spiritually, that it has within it a creative force to change me, to transform me, to impact me. We're called, of course, in the word to render our, rend our hearts, but I also believe we've got to render and that word render means to melt. There has to be a tearing, but there has to be a melting of our hearts by the Holy Spirit so that we receive. It is the one thing to handle the Word of God, but it's another thing to believe what God says, Smith Wigglesworth said. The great aim of the Holy Spirit's power within us is to bring us in line with His perfect will that we are unhesitantly believe the Scriptures, daring to accept them as authentic divine principle of God. In this hour where the devil wants to so persuade you that it's all a lie and get you so fixed on a natural that he will, with an agenda, blur out certain things. Because don't look behind the curtain. But the Holy Spirit comes as a spirit of truth and shows all things if you will dare listen to him. And he said, now let me show you the word which is forever established and not temporal things that you look at all creation held together by the power of the Word because the Word speaks laws, life, and authority. And it holds all things. It controls all things. And it produces something that's wonderful and has purpose. When we do, we will have our feet so firmly fixed upon the plan of redemption that it will not matter from whence comes trials or other things. For our whole nature will be so enlarged that it will be no more I, but Lord, what will thou have me to do? That no matter what I face, I found such a security and a knowledge that those promises are so real that I get the revelation of who I am. I, so I open the word, the Holy Spirit bringing to me revelation and sharing to me, always speaking over me, who I am in Christ that causes such a confidence and a boldness and a standing in me that I'm strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Now I can go offensively and claim every precious promise and see in my life the things of heaven birthed. I can declare this is the day of salvation. How many of us make a stand? How many of us dare challenge the things that the enemy's thrown at us? How many of us stand and say, this day, God, this is the day. I make a stand this day on your word. I make a stand this day on your precious promise. I claim it this day. I challenge and I dare speak to the mountain. See, we're not called to so tolerate the mountain, but you're called to speak to it and command it to be moved. You are. Oh God, you move it. Command it. Speak to it. Lay hold of who you are in Christ and of those precious promises. Not in my might. Not in my power. That mountain's not moving by me, but it is moving as I make a stand of who I am. And through that authority that was given to me in the name of Jesus, I'm anointed and empowered and the Holy Spirit bearing witness of who I am. So now I speak under such an anointing, such an awareness, such an authority and confidence, knowing today is the day. So the mountain begins to tremble. The mountain has to move by the mighty hand of God. Not me, but just me understanding who I am. We must become carriers of His presence. Listen to this. Every believer should be a living epistle of the Word, the one who is read and known of all men. Your very presence should bring such a witness of the Spirit that everyone with whom you come in contact would know that you were sent a light in the world, a manifestation of Christ, so that something in you they look and see. But see, most people have said, I don't want what you have because we've been in this horrible, place of discouragement and depression, striving to somehow make and be who we're, we, we know we're supposed to be. But in the secret place of His presence, I am broken of that old. I am that old is killed in me. And a new person comes forth with a confidence and this relationship in Him. It's not about me, but as I abide in Him, 
as I stand in Him, as I get such a revelation through that life that He's putting in me, that every day I stand knowing, and there's an outflow. Oh, I want you to so have an outflow. So as you spend time in the secret place, knowing Him, clinging to Him, holding on, saying, Jesus, I just want to know you. Holy Spirit, show me, teach me, Jesus. I want to know you and go after Him until such a time where that outflow of spending time in His presence just comes up and the world sees it. Smith said, he added, the hours come and all in Christ shall be made alive. Not death, but the fullness of divine life. That God wants to so bring you into such a place that you are filled with life. That you are the blessed of the Lord. Everything you touch, that blessing in you blesses. It's got a life. It imparts something. That you now have a message of life. You have a shout of joy. You have something in him. Smith. He had been challenged because someone said, you preach, and there's a, an authority, there's something about what you preach. What is it? And so Smithra said this, I replied that it was because I preached Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit, for he was the Messiah. He causes a child of his to so live in the reality of a clear knowledge of himself that others know and feel his power. I want you to walk in such a place that that revelation that reality of Jesus is so real. You see him and you know who he is today. You understand that at his name, every knee shall bow and everything in you bows. Every thought, every emotion bows because you fully recognize who he is today in your life. Because when you recognize it, when you bow, then your circumstances will bow. It has to get real for you today. It has to happen to you today. You can't put off. See, what I put off till tomorrow, that tomorrow I will address these issues, then your breakthrough is not coming. But see, it has to happen today. Today I bow. Today I allow my spirit to come and surrender. Today I come with a broken heart. Everything that's standing in the way, Holy Spirit, so change, so expose, and deal with today, not tomorrow, today. I want to walk forth today. Because every day I wake up, it's today. And every day I want to have a now today relationship with Him. Every day I want to walk today, knowing who I am in Christ, being a voice for Him on the earth, revealing Him, growing every day in that knowledge. So that, and I'll finish with this, as the stream of new life begins to flow through your being, allow yourself to be immersed, carried on one uh, with an increasing flow until your life becomes a ceaseless flow of the river of life. Then it will be no more I, but Christ in me. And I want you to come to a place where you are so blessed of the Lord. And the word blessing has within it kneel. It has within it worship because it comes from that place of kneeling in the secret place. And that place of worship that now I am blessed and my life being blessed brings worship brings glory. As Jesus said, Father, glorify the Son, that the Son may glorify you. The blessing in that life of surrender, in the life of kneeling, in that place of contact with the now Lord, in that place of stepping in and who I am now in Christ, receiving that now finished work of the cross, receiving that now that I am raised up with Him in heavenly places. Now, and in that now place, Something changes in me. And I come and I am blessed now. I have a life flowing now. And there's something in me. I recognize. I look at all the blessings of Deuteronomy 28. All those things are mine in Christ. And my life brings worship. As I step into these things, my life brings worship. I'm not looking for the tangible things. I'm looking for Him. My eyes are on Him. See, I bless Him and it's always worship. My life is always in worship. And as He puts things into my hand, it's always in worship of Him. My whole being, because I abide now in the secret place. You're in a place of breaking through. You're in a place where everything's about to change. And while you may not see it manifest right now, it has in the spiritual realm. And if you will hold fast, more is happening behind the scenes. Hold fast. 
It is coming. And God wants to bring you to the place where you are the blessed of the Lord. There is a river of life flowing in you, flowing out of you. And you know who you are in Christ, not with an arrogance, but in a humility, in a broken and contrite heart. Understanding, receiving, and appreciating the present-day ministry of the Holy Spirit. And that's how you stand. And that's how you live this life out, through His ministry. Amen? Oh, I pray you're blessed, and we'll continue talking. We're going to look at other aspects to develop this, so that you lay hold of this and walk this out, that now is the day of salvation. I thank you, and I want to ask you, would you consider liking, sharing, and subscribing? As you do, it impacts the algorithms at YouTube and Google to get this video out to more people, and I thank you for that. I would also ask you, would you consider joining our prayer partnership team? As you do, you start committing to pray for this ministry because I believe impact and effectiveness comes on the basis of prayer. And you begin to commit to pray for the other partners. Now you have partners praying for you. At any moment, anytime, God can touch any partner to pray for you. What a glorious thing. And then finally, you receive the reward when we stand before the Lord for all the impact of this ministry. It costs you nothing. It is free. Now, if you want to be a prayer, sorry, financial partner, we're looking for those too. Thank you, because that enables us to do more things for God. But I'm standing and first of all asking for prayer partners, because they are the most important thing. Finally, please check out more in the series. Look at more series. May they bless you, help you, encourage you to live boldly for Jesus in this hour. We've got numbers of series of videos out there to help you, teach you, bring you such a now word to inspire, encourage, and build you up. Thank you for watching. Know that we love you. We're praying for you. And this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because of, through him, and for him. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.